in addition to the gameplay and the new weapons. We we're adding a bunch of our features here. So we can start by talking about HBAO Plus a little bit. Something we've shown in the past, but I think it uh, merits a, a slight rehash over here. Uh, we went through the, the history of computer graphics as far as global illumination. This concerned yesterday with Yuri's talk. He mentioned ambient inclusion in that, um, that which is our poor man's global illumination, but very, very um, uh, computationally inexpensive relative to full global illumination. Uh, our solution for ambient occlusion is unrivaled. It's for the quality level, I don't think there's anything that's as, uh, as efficient. And we can show what the effects of this are. So without ambient occlusion on the left, you can see that character, he looks kind of flat. He doesn't really look like he's next to that wall. Uh, the proximity is not obvious if you're just to focus in around his, his head around here. But if you look at it on the right side over here with ambient occlusion, the, the shadows that you get as a result of it really plant him in the scene. See this slider over here show the difference. So as with all global illumination effects, I think if you would just look at the game in, in the still without it, you'd say, you know, that looks pretty good. And then if you separately just looked at it with it, you'd say that looks great too, but it's kind of hard to see the big difference um, right off the bat. But these subtle differences really make the difference between it feeling feeling like something that that you would see in the movie theater or you experience in real life. It's it's often hard to describe it. It's a feeling that you have, but it's definitely there. You know when it's something is wrong. It just perpetually bugs you. So AO helps and and moving forward with more advanced global illumination like the SGI, we're gonna be seeing a lot more of that. that that sort of immersiveness. Uh, percentage closer soft shadows. Uh, this is shadowing technology that we developed that uh, helps us approximate penumbra effects from, from uh, light sources. So if you look, look at this area over here, the shadows from the foliage are way too sharp. Um, depending on how, how close the, the objects are to the ground or to the to the object the shadow is being projected on, the shadow should focus in or get softer and blurrier. And that's sort of what you get without any sort of special shadowing stuff. It's typical shadow mapping technology. But if you look over here, uh, you'll see that it's blurrier and, and more natural looking. Uh, the other thing you get is for, for situations like uh, when an object is casting a shadow onto another object, but they're, they're actually touching. Where it's touching, it should be more focused. It's a little bit hard to see there. Let's see if the next slide has this. Uh, it should stay focused and sharper, but as the shadow um, gains distance from the object casting the shadow, casting the shadow, it should get blurrier. So you can see it stays sort of sharp here and then gets blurrier as you move along. Another subtle effect, but it, it helps it not feel like just a video game. TXAA, we talked about this in our Kepler launch quite a bit. I won't go into details about how the anti-aliasing algorithm works, unless you want to ask questions about it. But they've added that. Uh, which is great, because it TXAA, unlike some of the other forms of AA we, we provide, actually requires uh, the application developer to do some work uh, on their part. So they were willing to do that because they felt the quality merited it. Uh, an, another new technology that we've developed, I don't think we've actually put in any games yet, this might be the first one, is God Rays. Uh, these have been simulated in the past um, by, by some image processing techniques, but they're really uh, lacking relative to what you would see in a typical sort of 
cinematic or film render, offline render. Um, what we're doing, uh, for those of you that don't know what God rays are, they are rays of light that come from God through trees. <laughs> you can kind of see them over there. Um, <clears throat> without, without God rays, uh, essentially, it feels as if the atmosphere is a vacuum. There's nothing in there. But in real life, we actually have some matter in air. And when you have bright light sources like the sun, uh, uh, when it's bright enough, you actually have reflectance from the particles that are in the air between you and the other objects. That's, that's the reason you get God rays in these situations. They're pronounced here because the tree is actually casting a shadow through that atmosphere. And the shadows cause these beams. So the, the clever trick that, that our engineers did is to take the shadow map that you typically have from uh, shadows cast by something like that tree and use our tessellation engine to generate geometry for each one of those rays to